guys, come on! Protein purifier, Sonic Cakes. So right now, I am starting a protein purification. So I had bacteria express a protein that, or so make a protein that I'm interested in by putting the genetic recipe for it into the bacteria as we talked about before. And so I, um, these are the cells that after they made the protein. And right now my job is to break them open and purify the protein out. So to help me with the break them open part um, and to also shear the DNA as I'll talk about, so basically shred up the DNA so it's not gonna interfere with my protein purifying because it gets all bloopy. I'm using this thing called an ultrasonicator. Um, this is a probe tip ultrasonicator. Um, so you see this probe here. And I have my, um, the process is, um, it basically works by making all these little bubbles in the, um, the liquid and the, those bubbles burst and then that generates these shock waves that break, like, the thing, break things and stuff. But, and I'll talk more about it. But first I want to show you it because it's kind of um, interesting and because I want to get it started. But, um, so it, the process is gonna generate heat. So I have it in this um, like ice water bath that um, is made out of styrofoam. Um, so it's like a styrofoam box and then it's filled with an ice water bath and then there's a little cutout so that your um, beaker doesn't like fall down because that can happen as the ice melts because it gets hot. But basically you don't want your protein to get hot so which is why the ice. So I, um, our, <laughs> it doesn't, there's like a little stand thing, doesn't go to the right height, so we have some styrofoam blocks on top. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it up and put the probe inside, and then it's going, I'm going to set it to go for burst. So it's like two seconds on, shh, four seconds off to go to second, shh, and then it just keeps going. Um, so I'll do several cycles of that um, to help with it. Yeah, so that's the probe sonicator. We also have like a bath sonicator um, that you might remember from me uh, cleaning the cryolates from the crystal get the crystals off so it's kind of like this and you might have also have some sort of sonicator that you've used to clean your jewelry um so let's talk about how all this works quick note that i'm not a physicist i'm a biochemist so i'm doing my best and hopefully i get the terminology right so basically it's ultrasound waves they're a type of sound waves and unlike light waves sound waves actually has to like travel through a media so, so it travels through something so you have these waves that are actually like pushing matter and so like pushing the molecules and when the ultrasonicator does this what it's doing is so you have this wave and so you're generating this like area of high pressure and then area low pressure and high pressure and low pressure and high pressure and low pressure so what happens is that you have this, when you stick the tip into water, or if you're using a bath sonicator, it's coming out from the walls or something. Um, but the sonication waves are gonna travel through the water and they're gonna push those water molecules. So the water molecules right now are a, in a liquid form. So in a liquid form, the molecules are like, interacting with one another they can slide past one another but they can't like fully break free so if you have a solid they're like stuck together if you have a liquid they can like slide past each other and if you have a gas they can be free um to move around water really wants to be a gas because when they're a gas they're free so it but what happens is that it's hard to be a gas so basically you have these intermolecular forces so the water molecules are pulling on one another it's hard for bubbles to form so even when you're boiling water you'll see the bubbles under the surface before you actually even you actually get the water to boil because you have this like pressure coming from all the water molecules around it um, and like the water pushing down um, so it's really hard to be a gas is the basic thing it's easier to become a gas when the pressure is lower. So we had all those forces pushing the water molecules together, making it harder for them to become a gas. The reason why things can boil is that you give the molecules enough energy to break free from one another. And heat um, is a form of energy. So heat is energy. You can add energy in other forms though too. And so the sonication is adding energy and they're decreasing that pressure so there's less energy required to escape. So it actually does get hot, which is why we do it on ice when we're doing this with our proteins that you're giving through these waves 
is giving the molecules the energy that they need to break free from one another but only in those regions of low pressure. So remember with the ultrasonication, we had regions of high pressure followed by regions of low pressure. So in the regions of the low pressure, it's easier for the water molecules to become a gas. Whereas in the, heart, the higher pressure, they can't. But the problem is with the sonication, you're in these waves, remember? So one region that is at low pressure is next second it's going to be at high pressure and so what happens is you have these bubbles forming in the regions of the low pressure but they, they're going to get hit by the regions of by the oncoming high pressure wave and this is going to cause them to collapse and so this is a process called gaseous cavitation um, so you have all of these tiny little bubbles in these zones that are collapsing. So when you have this, you're having this shock waves given out and so that has is releasing energy and that energy is what is actually going to like shear the DNA, rip the DNA into pieces. Um, this is really useful when we're doing protein purification um, because it allows in the our sample is filled with all it had in addition to the protein that we want and the proteins that we don't want, it also has a bunch of DNA that we don't want. The DNA can be all really globby when you're um, trying to work with it um, and get the protein free and it can even like trap your protein. So by shearing the DNA, so by cutting, like ripping it into pieces, it makes it easier to free your protein. And so this, um, I do sonication as part of this, um, my purification process. So. It's part of this lysis step, and so I use um, it's it's really good for the DNA and can also help with the lysis. Um, so I, that's the actually breaking the cells open. So typically, what I do is I um, use salt and sonication and flash freezing um, and thawing um, to help with the lysis. It's easier to break open insect cells, which is what I normally work with, um, than bacterial cells because bacterial cells also have a cell wall um, so you have to, so with bacterial cells I typically do like multiple cycles of higher intensity sonication and freeze thaws um, so if we look back at what DNA is so it has these um, negatively charged um, backbone so we have all this broken up DNA and so that helps get it away um, that'll help it make it less globby, but we want to also, if we can like remove it before we go on with the purification, um, so before we even like spin down that lysate to try to get the pellets, um, so then it'll be easier to purify. And so in order to do this, we can add something positively charged. And so the po a positively thing charged thing that we can add is this molecule called PEI, um, polyethylenamine. So you might have heard of PEI being used to help as a cationic carrier to help DNA get into cells um, because it can like mask the DNA's negative charge and help it get near the cell. But it can also be used to um, like precipitate out the DNA because so basically, a thing, things are usually least soluble in their neutral form because in their charge form, water likes them because water has like positive and negatively charged regions. It's what we call polar. And so if you have a neutral molecule, something like a lipid, so like a fat, it so it won't like mix with water because it is it offers nothing really for the water to interact with. So if you make this, you have DNA, which is negatively charged, so it's going to be really soluble. The water likes it. But if you neutralize it, then the water won't like it. And so you can add this polyethylenamine, this PEI, um, to the DNA, um, to your lysate. So that's the what, after you've broken open the cells, that mixture of what was in the cells. If you add um, this PEI, it'll make the DNA unattractive to the water. So now you have this neutral thing and it's gonna precipitate out, so it's gonna come out of solution. It's pretty cool when you do it, you can add a drop rise um, with spinning, and you can actually like see it'll get like thicker and wider um, as the DNA is precipitating out. But you also wanna be careful um, because 
if you add like too much, you can actually precipitate out proteins. Um, so PEI can actually be used um, like to selectively um, precipitate out proteins as part of a purification step later. Um, so yeah, so you want to make sure that you're not precipitating out your protein in the process. So you use a lower amount. So after you do that, um, then it's off to the ultra centrifuge. So then, so basically you pour your con the lysate um, that you've added the PEI to after you let it um, go for a couple minutes. Then you um, pour it into these tubes and you spin this down and you get this thing, um, this pellet, um, so that with the cell membranes and other um, gunky stuff and the P um, your PEI precipitated DNA. And then in this liquid part, you have your protein and then you can go through um, the purification um, using like chromatography. So we talked about chromatography before, but basically we have these columns filled with these little beads called resin and we have different um, types of columns for different things. And then we flow the liquid um, containing the protein so that lysate, we flow it through these columns and then the proteins will interact differently and we can purify our proteins that way. Um, and so hope that helps.